Hello all you Sally Wagons. I have no idea if I said that correctly. Do you need a plugin to protect your land? Of course you do. Stop those evildoers from PvPing on your land or those nasty creepers from destroying it. Trust me, it's that easy. It's a plug and play style. And I'm gonna go for it all with you right now. But before we do, I have a message for you. Need a way to monitor your player's CPU, memory, and more with ease? And a clean, user-friendly control panel? Revive Node has you covered. Filter console errors effortlessly, and install plugins or mods and different Minecraft versions with just a click. And wait, there's more. Use the promo code DIAMOND in all caps at the checkout for 15% off your first purchase. Experience premium servers at a pocket-friendly price. Check it out today at revivenode.com. To begin this, we're going to need a few items. So we can do slash PC give, and then when we click tab, you can see that we have all these individual items. Now, to save us time, we're just going to click on all because we are going to be discussing every single item. So there's no point in just running every single command. But if you want to try each individual one, you can just do that. After that, we'll get all the items in our hot bar. And don't worry, if you need to know the crafting, I'm going to be putting on the top right of every single item we discuss. First of all, we have the primary protection cord. This is what's going to ensure that your area is going to be protected. You're going to need this as the base in order to ensure all the other modules work. In order for it to work, we're going to need a three tall redstone pyramid. And if you look at that, we have one conveniently already placed. And of course, this has to be full redstone. You can't just juke it like we usually do on regular beacons. After you have that, you can go ahead and just place the protection core on top. If you do try placing it anywhere else, it will just break off immediately. And now we have our protection core. And maybe we can place down our modules. So we have the protection one module. This sets the protection area a 30 by 30 block area. And then we have the next one, which is a protection two, which sets it a 60 by 60. And then we have the next one, which is 120 by 100. 120 and last but not least we have 240 by 240. Not to make this tutorial drive me insane and dry, go out 240 blocks, I'm just going to do it 30 by 30. And then we have other modules as well. For example, mobs won't spawn, we can disable PvP, and creepers won't do damage. We will be checking out the creepers and the mob spawning won't really work in this world, but no worries about that. And we can even add players to our protection. So if I wanted to add an extra player, I could just by inputting their name. But the main thing right now is fuel, because this is something that really reminds me about playing Rust is you need to keep the base active or else it will not work. People can come in and start doing destruction. I really like that idea. Three different fuel types by default, and you can go into configuration where we check out later and add more. We can add coal and that'll give us a duration of 15 minutes. We can add a block of coal and it will increase it up to an hour. We, we can add a redstone block, which should even increase it by an hour and 30 or an hour and 22. Hard to tell when I actually added the coal there. Don't worry about it too much though. But I'm just gonna go ahead and keep a whole thing of coal in here. And that will give us two full days. So this is a great way to keep your player base online and ensuring that they come back and keep on beating their protection cord to ensure their area is safe. The last item that we have here now is the info item. And for that, we can just right click the ground and it'll tell us if we own the region or not. And right there it says, this block is in no region, but close to another region to place your protection core on it. So I can see here that I own all the way up to about this block right here. Perfect, right on the line. But with that being said, I don't have any players, but we still can test out the creeper just by placing it down, going in survival, changing the difficulty of all people realizing, and then placing a creeper down. And just like that, nothing happened at all. I really do like the idea of enforcing players to come back and keep an area protected. That way, one, it ensures that just leave random builds if you're going for a more PvP aspect server, or you just don't want people to claim things and then never return to it, which happens quite a lot. All right, and in the configuration files, there's not really too much. We have the data, and this is just gonna inform you of all the locations of the beacons and what there might be in it. Now, if we go into configuration, this is where things start getting juicy. We do have an overview, so there's the general options, the crafting options, the items, inventory, messages, fuel, and placeholders. So in the options, we have Pyramid True. It's pretty self-explanatory when you just read the titles above it. If you set to true, player needs to place the protection core on a three block high pyramid. And this is set to true. And you can also enable or disable in certain worlds. If I can suggest anything for the developer, I wish we can change what type of block the pyramid can be made out of, because that would have been a perfect opportunity to me for me to make it out of diamonds. But I can also see why. It's because beacons already do use diamonds, but if we do have any custom blocks, that'd be great as well, especially for people to do resource packs. And then you have your inventory title, so protection core. This is going to be that menu that showed up and we have the protection radius so we can set up the radius for each protection core module enabled only the owner can destroy it essentially. And then we have other parameters that we could change such as protect water flow lava, particles on block, particles on place, 
and just a ton. And we also can change the crafting right here if we ever need to. Going down below, you can change a lot of the messages and items. And the final part that I need to show is the fuel. Here we can even add more if we want to, but you can define the item and the amount of time for each individual fuel type. Of course, we just have placeholders. But yeah, that's really all you really need to know in the actual configuration file. It's simple and quick and doesn't require much. It's a really plug and play type of plugin. But yeah, that's the whole video right there. Hope you guys have enjoyed. If you guys have, make sure to give a like on the video. If you want to check out the plugin, it's going to be in the description down below. Other than that, here's the video that YouTube thinks you're going to like. But I'm Diamond. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I will catch you guys next time. Cheers.